As soon as Jace was born, something just changed to me and I, the love that I have for him is like nothing I've ever experienced before. Um, he motivates me so much. He, like if I'm having a hard day or there's a tough time, I'm still happy with him. Hi everyone, you're very welcome back to Great Media. I'm your host, Maria Means. Today I am delighted to be joined by Irish MMA star Shauna Bannon, or Mama B, as those familiar with the world of MMA will know her. Shauna has had an incredible few days. She announced just days ago that she has been signed to the UFC, which is of course the world's biggest MMA promotion. She joins us now to talk about her unbelievable journey that she's been on over the last year since turning pro. And she also shares exclusively with Gript a little bit of her personal story. Shauna experienced a crisis pregnancy three years ago and she shares about the life-changing support she received from a pregnancy support organisation called Gianna Care, which empowered her to continue her pregnancy and to choose life for her little boy, Jace. So we're delighted to be able to share a bit of her personal story and also her latest career news. Shauna, thank you so much for being here. It's lovely to see you in person. Obviously, we did a feature on your Gianna Care story last month and we had a lot of voice notes and back and forth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of voice yeah. notes. <laughs> so it's nice in person to see you. Yeah, so good to see you yeah. too. And how are you doing? Obviously, you've had an unbelievable few days. I'm sure you're just still on cloud nine. Yeah, no, I really am. Um, this is the next step in my journey and it's a huge milestone in my career. So um, like it's not even, I'm only doing MMA five years, so it's not even the past five years, it's the years before that in kickboxing as well. And um, that led me to where I am today. And it's a huge milestone for my club Talon Martial Arts and my club Poolham Martial Arts and all my coaches. Um, that helped me in strength and conditioning and John Connors in the ISI and everyone that's helped me along the way, all my training partners and coaches as well. So it's, um, it's a huge time for all of us, um, but I'm only getting started. This is just the next chapter. Amazing, Sean. It's definitely such an exciting time. For some of our viewers, I think a lot of them will know who you are, especially the MMA fans, obviously. But would you just introduce yourself briefly, you know, give a bit of an introduction, maybe a little bit about your childhood and growing up and your love of sport? Yeah, I've always been um, very athletic from a young age. I was always doing something every night of the week. Um, I started off with kickboxing. Um, I done Irish dancing for a few years as well. Um, but I think then when I got to about 11 or 12, I kind of just had to pick one and go serious with one. And I chose kickboxing. Um, it's my family gym here, my dad owns Tala Martial Arts. So me and my sister pretty much grew up um, in kickboxing. Every weekend we were always at tournaments and then during the week we were training um, from a very young age. So the two of us are quite sporty, um, kind of like a tomboy as a child I would have been. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's a great childhood that I got in that because I got to travel a lot. I got to see the world and then compete at such a high level. I think like looking back now at the time, it was just normal, but really like not everyone gets that opportunity to be reared that way and get them experiences and opportunities. So it is, it's something that I'm so grateful for and um, it's led me to where I am today. So it's so exciting. Amazing. And obviously we're here shooting at Talon Martial Arts, which is your dad's gym, as you said. Um, and you started here like when you were three years old, you've been on an incredible journey. Yeah. Like how does that feel, you know, for your family now, looking, you know, looking to the future, looking back, I'm sure it's a very, you know, emotional time because obviously you, you're joining the likes of Conor McGregor and Ian Gary on, you know, the, the UFC head count and it's, it's, it's huge. Yeah, no, I, like I think sometimes I don't realise how big it is because I knew I was going to be here. It was my goal and I'm very goal driven and I've always achieved, when I set out a goal, I've always achieved it in my life. So I think like in a way it's kind of like, okay, yeah, I know. But when I sit back and reflect and kind of think of how I got here in such a short space of time as well, like I, I'm only doing MMA five years, although I have my background in kickboxing. Um, but I don't think anyone has grown as fast as I have in mixed martial arts. So it is, it's a really special moment. And like, I think my dad's kind of the same as me. Like when I told him I got signed, he was like, oh yeah, brilliant. But like, it's not, it, he wasn't shocked. He knew this day was coming and the same with my mom, because this is what I've worked towards, you know? So um, it, although we are all really overwhelmed and delighted, it is something that we knew was going to happen. We knew this day was going to come. Uh -huh. And as you say, your background would be in kickboxing and also in Taekwondo. And you, you know, you've not been doing MMA for 
you know, a long time in consideration when you compare it to some of the other people for the level that you're at. Um, would, you, would you say, you know, starting off MMA, you knew this is what I want to do and I'm going to go this far. Was it an instant love of the sport that you experienced? Yeah, 100%. Um, when I started, I actually wasn't even, when I went to Paddy's gym, I wasn't even going to do MMA. I had been doing Taekwondo for like a year and a half. My goal was to go to the Olympics. I wanted to go to the Olympics, but it just wasn't for me, Taekwondo. I missed punching. I missed the freedom of the, the of a lot of rules in Taekwondo. So I decided then maybe I'll just do something different. I'll join Jiu Jitsu and I won't be competitive. And I done one class in Jiu Jitsu. I went back the following day and the, I done my Jiu Jitsu class and Kiefer Crosby was there at the time. And he said, jump into the MMA class. Paddy wasn't there, he was away and he was covering for him. And I fell in love straight away. And I knew, I was like, I'm going to the UFC. I want to be professional in this. I want to make a career out of this. And this is what I want to do. And I haven't stopped since. I've been training twice a day since, even when I was pregnant. Um, I'm just like, totally in love with it. I don't think, like I idolised kickboxing. Anyone that knows me and grew up around me in kickboxing knows I gave my whole life to it. But MMA, I just have a different love for it. I think I can really express myself as a martial artist and as a human because um, there's so much to it and I don't think you'll ever be able to say I'm 100% perfect at anything because it's constantly growing and developing. There's always something new because there's so many parts to it. There's wrestling, judo, grappling, the striking, like it's just, there's so much to it and I want to be amazing at every part of it. So I'm just addicted to learning and addicted to get better at it. And when we did our feature, like last month, obviously we spoke about your story, a bit of your personal story, and you told me, obviously, your mama bee, and you told me how a commentator who was announcing the fight literally coined the name and it stuck with you. And I think motherhood, like, it is a huge part of who you are. It's a huge part of, you know, your brand and, and everything else. And when you won your last professional fight, it was in Invicta uh, in March on St. Patrick's Day weekend. And there was a really great video online of you and you dedicated your victory to all the mamas at home in Ireland. It was um, Mother's Day weekend. Congratulations, Shauna. Mama B, let's hear it one more time. One more. Um, it's Mother's Day on Sunday in Ireland, so I just want to say a shout out to all the mamas because it's not easy being a mom, especially the ones that are doing it alone. So happy Mother's Day to everyone, especially my mom, who has done so much for me in this camp. She's literally stayed in my house every night to look after Jace while he's sleeping and um, while I was in the altitude tent. So thank you so much, mom. For all the mamas. What would you say for you, you know, would you talk a little bit about being, being a mother? Obviously, you've got Jace, who's two, um, and what being, what being a mother means to you? Yeah, um, it's my, my biggest title. Um, although I'm world champion so many times, um, nothing compares to being a mother. I think as soon as Jace was born, something just changed to me, and I, the love that I have for him is like nothing I've ever experienced before. Um, he motivates me so much. He, like if I'm having a hard day or there's tough time, I'm still happy with him. Whatever, if I win, if I, like even when I get my UFC contract, like all these things are just bonuses. When he's there and he's healthy and happy, nothing can compare to that. That's just everything. And I think um, I'm so glad he chose me as his mom. And I'm like, I'm a completely different person since I had him and, I appreciate everything so much more since becoming his mom. Um, and it's just amazing to have him here on this journey with me. And although Shauna, like you're, you're undefeated as a mother between five amateur fights and five pro fights, you're now the second woman in Irish history to be signed to the UFC. And you've achieved all of that in you know, a short space of time. But there was a stage, wasn't there, where you feared that becoming a mother and having a little boy uh, in an unplanned situation, that that was something that might, you know, derail your dreams, that might sort of hamper the aspirations that you had. Would you talk a little bit about the crisis pregnancy you experienced and how that felt to find yourself uh, pregnant three years ago um, in obviously an unplanned situation? Yeah. Um, when I seen the positive on that pregnancy test, to be honest, I thought my life was over. Um, I had so many, I was like towards the end of my amateur career at that stage. I had my plans on when I was going to go pro and then to see three weeks plus pregnant on the, the pregnancy test, I screamed cry for about two hours. Um, 
I literally couldn't see anything that I wanted from my future being there anymore. I thought that that was all just taken away. Um, and it was a really tough time. It was a really tough time. I don't think, um, although I had, like, I had support around me, I just felt so lonely. I felt like nobody understood what I was going through. Um, I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I didn't think that that was ever going to be a thing. And I thought at that time, I remember I was like 11 weeks pregnant and I remember the abortion stuff was everywhere and it was like, you can only get it up until 12 weeks in Ireland. And I had my mind set on getting an abortion. And I just couldn't see any positivity from pregnancy. And I couldn't have been more wrong. Like I really couldn't have been more wrong because my life has changed for the better since I've had Jace. And if it wasn't for Gianna Kerr, um, I don't know if I'd be in the same position that I am in today. And I don't know if I would be as successful in my MMA career if it wasn't for that, because I do believe that you need to go through struggles to kind of maybe motivate you or push you that little bit more. And that period of time, you're pregnant for nearly, what is it, nine months, nearly 10. It's a very long time. It's 40 weeks you're pregnant for. And I had, on the second half of my pregnancy, while Gianna Kerr were there, I, I met up with them at like 11 weeks and I had their support throughout that and it was still really tough. So I can only imagine for people that don't have the support how tough it is because it was just, if you can imagine my whole life has been training and working towards goals and that was all put on hold and taken away from me. And I know it doesn't sound like it's something to most people, they're like, oh, would you just relax and chill out? But like, I am so goal driven and if I don't have a goal that I'm working towards and training towards, I feel lost. So it was like my identity was taken from me overnight, I suppose. And it was a really, really hard time. And I found it really hard to accept the fact that I was pregnant. It, I think I was probably nearly 30 weeks before I was like, OK, I, I actually have a child in me and I'm going to have a child now. But then when he was born, like everything just changed. Like it was for the better, like the love, instant love that I had for him and everything was just for him. And I don't think you can ever have a time in life where I know people have planned pregnancies, um, but no one can ever be 100% prepared for a pregnancy because so many complications in pregnancies alone that women have, um, in giving birth that women have, postnatal women have, it's, there's always complications. And there, I don't think there's ever a perfect time, but I do think that you can always make it work. And no matter how hard it is, I think, you can always make it work and there is support out there and there is help out there and it doesn't have to be a bad thing. Like looking back now, I kind of got into a dark road and it led to another and another and another and I was in a bad space. I was in a bad space for myself. Um, towards the end, I kind of got a little bit better, but I do think that was down to the support that I had around me and me switching my mindset from a negative to a positive. And then when you have one positive, I think it leads to another and another. It's the same. You can go down, 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 or you can go up, up, up. And towards the end, luckily, I went up, 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 and it's been up since. Amazing, Shauna. And obviously, you spoke there about Joanna Care, um, which is a pregnancy support organisation. They have centres across Ireland in different places. Um, and obviously you got pregnant, it was March 2020, Ireland had just gone into a lockdown and I think a lot of people at that time, there was a sense of isolation and for you, that was made worse by the fact that you were pregnant and you were not sure if you were you know, going to be a single parent or how things were going to work out. Would you talk us through finding Gianna Care because you found them on an online search, didn't you? Yes, yeah, so I was actually in my Nana's house at the time and... I was looking up abortions online. That's what I was looking up because I had been thinking about it since I found out I was pregnant and it, I was just going through a really bad time. I wasn't with Jace's dad. I was just, everything was just, I felt like my whole life was just upside down and I'm not used to that because I'm used to being organised and having structure. So for that all to be taken away and for me not to be able to do what I want because I'm growing a human, it was just like my brain, me, I couldn't accept it. So I'm Googling, it was like two in the morning, I'm Googling how to like arrange an abortion. And Janica came up and it was an online chat and I didn't even realize what it was. I just registered my details in for the chat. I thought this was me communicating with someone that I was getting an abortion, but it, like looking back now, it obviously wasn't. And Julia was online and she chatted with me and 
now talking to her now, she said she wasn't even supposed to work then. Like um, someone called in sick and they were just going to have to chat offline. And she ended up popping on and that's how we met. And that changed my life. That one chat is the chat that changed my life because she arranged to meet me the next day. We were in lockdown. So we went to a park that was outside. So she still made herself available, even though their generic services weren't there. We met up in a park, we went for a walk and instantly when I met her, I trusted her. There was just this like warm, genuine feeling about her. And because I trusted her, I opened up to her because I was so vulnerable. I was like at such a vulnerable stage in my life. I, I was like reaching for help. I was like somebody because I didn't, anything that was around me, I just didn't feel like no one understood how I felt. She's a mother herself. She's dealt with people that was in my position so many times. And I remember she said to me, I've never once heard from someone that I stopped from having a miscarriage. Not stopped, but advised on not having a miscarriage or a abortion, sorry, um, that, was, that regretted it. I've never once been with someone and they regretted it. And when she said that to me, it kind of just like stuck with me. And we got chatting and I was explaining my circumstances, my situations, and she just had an answer for everything. And it was the answers that I needed to hear. She really res resonated with me and I could really relate to her. And from that conversation, I knew I didn't want an abortion. It was just one of them things in the back of my mind. I was like, maybe, maybe, but no, I didn't. And it was just all the stuff that was going on around it like that was going on that was making me unsure but I knew deep down myself from one conversation with her and we continued to go out and she reassured me throughout the whole pregnancy she was there for absolutely everything she texted me every single day like she helped and supported me so much and I honestly wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for her because I know I needed to go through all that to be where I am now and it was all part of the journey. And Shauna you would say like it was just even the impact of talking to someone who was outside of the situation who could sort of make you see things because I think sometimes when you're in a situation you're too up close to it and for a lot of women who have crisis pregnancies and are abortion minded it's sort of rooted in the problems that they're facing and they want you know the pregnancy it's very overwhelming but actually you know she encouraged you and she sort of was able to separate what you were experiencing from the pregnancy and actually something good can come out of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She really reassured that. And she was she wasn't forceful in any way either. Like, you know, so she she said her opinion and if I kind of spoke about the abortion or she wasn't negative about it or she just gave her honest opinion, which was really kind of like it just clicked with me and I was like because there was some of my friends that were saying yeah, there was some that was saying no, there was some that was saying do what you and I was getting so many different and I just didn't know, but when I spoke with her, and I think because she has so much experience in it, it just, I knew, I knew it wasn't for me. And I'm, I'm so grateful that I met her and met up with her. And even the fact that she was online at two in the morning, like that, I didn't think that that was ever gonna be a thing. I, I couldn't sleep. I was literally like, my mind was in overdrive because I just didn't know what I was gonna do with my life. I didn't know how my life was gonna be with having a child. and. It, it couldn't be better like it's the best thing that's ever happened to me and if I hadn't have had Gianna Care and the support there God knows where I'd be today or what I'd be doing you know so it is it's I'm so grateful for them and I think it's lovely as well Shauna because you still keep in touch with Julia like GSC will be three in November so yeah. I think that's a testament to how much like she cares about you and GS. yeah she's the most genuine person ever like she'd do and I think she's like an earth angel that's what I just say to her you are an earth angel like she does do anything for anyone and she's so thoughtful she'll always check in we'll always meet up and it's just like she gives you that warm fuzzy feeling she's just like such a good person mm -hmm. she really is and Shauna as someone who's obviously been a client with Gianna Care how important do you think this support is for women that there is I think in Ireland at the minute there's very much we have a an increasing abortion rate and we have a, a a birth rate that's going down and I think motherhood sometimes is portrayed in a very negative way um especially if it's going to be difficult and your circumstances aren't perfect and there's very much a mentality well you know we have more of an abortion mentality than we would have had um how important do you think this sort of support is that there's a service 
where actually there are alternatives where, you know, if that's emotional help, um, financial help, practical help, whatever it is, how important do you think that is for women? It's so, so important and I don't think enough women know about it. Like I really don't. I always share on my story because I know a lot of women um, follow me and I do get messages from single mothers all the time about like advice and tips or even just saying you're doing amazing and like that means so much to me that someone in a position that I was in or is about to be in a position that I was in reaching out to me and like it really means a lot but I don't think that it's it's out there enough I don't think people suffer in silence and don't realize the support that is out there and I'm so grateful that I found it because I didn't, I didn't find it in a way of that was what I was looking for. I was looking for the opposite and I found that, which is amazing. But I know, I remember you were saying online, it's like blocking out. Yes, so I did want to ask you about this. So at the minute, the HSE and the government, um, there was a parliamentary question which was put in by a TD called Carol Nolan. And she asked them about the advertising spend, the money that had been spent on advertising um, my options, which is the HSE's um, like helpline for crisis pregnancies, but really it directs women towards abortion, um, and there has been scrut scrutiny over it in terms of you know are they actually talking about alternatives to abortion, and what the HSE said in a statement to that TD was that they had spent 834, I think it was 834,000 euro, nearly a million euro, on advertising spend to make sure that my options was coming up top in the search results and they said you know we need to be blocking out disingenuous providers so in other words places where there's alternatives to abortions and it's not abortion I mean so there is an active effort and you will see some TDs for example and they'll say well these are rogue agencies they need to be shut down they're not safe for women I mean how would you address that like not safe for women is the craziest thing I've ever heard because I couldn't have felt more safe with them and I still I have my child around Julia and like the safest people out there the whole I haven't even met all of them but I've spoke to some on the phone or by message and they're the most genuine people they actually care and want to help so to for that to be blocked out or that support to be blocked out online is just insane because if I hadn't have found that I might have went through the other route and I know them routes. I, I know people that have had abortions before and it's not a case that it, they advise against it. It's like, you have to be here for us to tick the list to put you out forward for this. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to say what There's we need a pressure, to say. Yeah. It, yeah, it's not a case of where it's genuine. Where I got like, when I was with Julia, she gave experiences and genuine, whereas I feel like with the my options route, it's more like tick the box thing. They don't actually even care about how you are as a person. They have to say this in order for this and it's just automatic, nearly like an automatic system online. That's what I've heard about that. Like obviously I haven't gone through that route, but that's the vibe that I get from it. Whereas what I got from Gianna Care was genuine and I could connect to it because I felt it was so genuine, which means something to someone way more than just the automated service, you know? Especially when you're pregnant because you're going through so many different hormone changes and you're all over the place. Whether it's a positive or a negative, like your pregnancy, you're going through mad changes. Your body is like the first period you're exhausted, that you could be sick. It's just, you go through so many ups and downs the whole time. So for you to be led in a direction where people don't actually really care, about what choice you make. If you're walking out and you end up getting an abortion, that person doesn't really care. Whereas with Gianna Kerr, I knew she cared and it was genuine. And I think that that makes so much more of the difference and it makes you open up more and it makes you relate to it more as well, you know? So I just find that crazy that that's how they're doing things because um, it's not fair on the women. It really isn't. And in terms of unplanned pregnancies and crisis pregnancies. I think, you know, in society and in the media, we do hear, um, maybe not so much anymore in Ireland, but, you know, about abortion and about crisis pregnancies. And I think sometimes it's maybe reduced to a debate and someone's point of view and opinions and whatever else. But sometimes I don't feel as though we fully try and understand 
the emotions that that woman is feeling and how hard that is and to walk in someone else's shoes. And I think it's probably impossible to put yourself in someone else's shoes if you haven't been there. Yeah. Like, would you speak maybe a bit more just about how tough that is? And like for you, what were the main things that sort of made you think of abortion? And this is maybe my only answer. Yeah, um, I think I just couldn't see any positivity from it. I thought because I had plans in place of what I wanted to do, and I thought if I had a child that that wouldn't be possible. But I couldn't have been more wrong, like because I do believe if you really, really want something in life, nothing will get in your way. And Jace coming along only made me actually more focused and more driven to where I want to be. Um, like with children, some of the most successful people in the world have kids. So for that to kind of be a thing, or some people think their lives are taken away from them. Like my life would have been fighting and it still is, but like then I thought that was taken away from me. Some people, it might be nights out on the weekend or everyone's different, but you can still live your life with having a child. And it's actually so much, so much better. Like my life only began when I had Jace. Like, the happiness that he brings me is like next to none. Everything else is a bonus because when I have him there, he is happy, he is healthy and we're having fun. Nothing else stops that. that everything else is a bonus. Everything else is a bonus. Us in our little bubble, that's everything to me. And a relationship and bond grows more and more daily as he's developing, as we're both connecting more. It's just... Like, I really don't think it's pushed. Like, I don't know why there's like a negativity towards motherhood um, because it's the most amazing thing in the world and it's the most natural thing in the world as well. Like, it's that's what women are here to do to reproduce. Like, so, um, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, and as you say, like you describe motherhood as being your superpower. And I think the message that you sent, it is pretty countercultural because there is almost a, sort of a societal thing where motherhood is seen as a drawback and you can wait as long as you want to have children and children are going to get in the way and like I think your story just completely just turns that on its head and you really I think you make an effort as well to promote being a mum and how special this is and how as you say like the suffering and like childbirth's not easy pregnancy's not easy that actually the sacrifices and the hard things in life make you better yeah 100 percent. like I think if the journey was just like this I wouldn't want to. It makes, it literally, it makes, the bumps in the road make the high so much more, you know? Like when I found out that I got signed to the UFC, I was like, look what I've overcome yeah. to get here. Especially in the last three years alone. Like, it's just, it makes it more. It makes that, like, inside you, that feeling that you get, it's just, it's more. And having Jace with me, alongside, I don't think it'd be the same without him. Like it wouldn't be a special, and I knew I wanted kids. I didn't always want kids, but I remember when my friend Nicole had a child, Lily, and seeing her progress and grow, I was like, no, I want the kids, you know? So um, ever since that, like I knew I wanted kids. So I had it at the perfect, I had Jace at the perfect time as well. Like I, at the time I didn't think it, but now looking back, because nothing was happening in the world, we were in complete lockdown. There was no shows, there was no training, like everything was stopped. So I really like, I do believe that everything happens for a reason. And sometimes you don't see it at the time, but it will always make sense. Maybe a year later, maybe two years later, maybe five years later, but I do believe that everything happens for a reason. And sometimes you can't see it in the now, yeah. but it will make sense eventually. And would you have any advice for someone, Shauna, who is maybe like, it's pretty like certain that there must be someone out there now in Ireland who's experiencing crisis pregnancy, who's maybe in a very similar situation that you were in and they maybe think like no possible good is going to come from this. I don't want to be a mother. This is just, my world is over. Because you do hear um, from women who've spoken about crisis pregnancies, there very much is a feeling my life is just finished like my life is over what advice would you give to someone who maybe can't see any light or any hope in that situation I think um like reaching out to Janica is what done it for me I don't think family friends people close to me it just it wasn't doing it for me I couldn't click with them I was just like stop 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 whereas seeing someone from an outside and have had experience and people feeling that way already 
the way Julia spoke to me, it just clicked, you know? And then I think that led from one positive thing to another positive thing. And then I came to acceptance that I was pregnant. And then I started getting excited about it, you know? Um, I think I spent a lot of my pregnancy. I, if I had to change my mindset earlier on, it could have been a more nice, like, I can't wait to have another child now because I'll actually enjoy the journey. Whereas when I was pregnant, I kind of, I didn't enjoy. I'm not going to lie. Like, I didn't enjoy my pregnancy. I was like, can't wait to get the baby out. Can't wait to get the baby out. And that's not good either because it's such a, an amazing experience. You're growing a human being. And I do understand there is people in certain circumstances that might want to get an abortion. And not that I don't agree with it, like if someone really believes that they think that they can bring a child into the world, okay, every, each to their own, but I really believe that that's not the case. If you really reach out and if you really think about it, it's like, it's the best thing ever in the world. Like it really is, nothing beats it, nothing beats it. Like when Jace came out of me and he was put in my arms, there's no better feeling than that. It's the most magical thing ever and you make it work. Something might be put on hold for a period of time, but your life is going to come back. And you watching a child grow and develop and they're starting to crawl, they're starting to walk, they're starting to speak. That's the best thing ever, seeing someone that you grew do that and grow and become a human being themselves and be able to do everything for themselves. It's just, there's nothing like it. There really isn't. And I just think people need to reach out more to the correct people and um, the support is there and it can switch your mindset and you can get into a positive mindset and enjoy the experience because I, that's one thing I regret not enjoying it as much as I should have, especially in the earlier days. So, yeah. And even Shauna, going back to your career, would you say like where you're at now, and obviously there was a stage where you thought this might not happen, would you say like you've actually been blessed by, you know, choosing life, by having him, by, going down a path which was very difficult at the time and now you know obviously so much of it's hard work but also that there might be you know blessings in the route that you've taken. Yeah like I'm grateful every day and it's the people that are around me as well like everyone is so supportive I'd be lost without my mum she looks after Jace every night and um, my family and friends that I have supporting me in the journey my coaches my training partners like the people that I have around me, I'm, I'm very, very lucky. And I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for them because it isn't easy being a single mother and having a child and doing this full time. Like people think it's just fighting, there's so much more to it. Like it's like the diet, the nutrition, the, it's, it does so much to it and you have to sacrifice so much as well. Like Monday to Friday, I don't put Jace to bed at night because my training sessions are on night time and that kills me, do you know? So my weekends putting him to bed on a Saturday and Sunday is very special with me because I miss that Monday to Friday. And someone might think that that's something tiny, but that means so much to me. And that's something I have to sacrifice because that's the times that my training sessions are on, my training partners are there in them hours, and that's what I have to do. But that's hard for me, and that's only one little thing out of so many. Um, and like even starting off in my professional career, the money is crap. So the past little while, I've, I haven't been getting paid like, let's say what I would have when I had a full-time job I worked in finance so I left that job in finance to towards the end of my amateur career because I was like right and gone pro soon and then I got pregnant so I was like I'm after le leaving a decent job with decent pay I'm not going to be able to even get maternity to leave I have to get the state maternity yeah. to leave like it was just and everything happened for a reason it looking back now that was perfect I'm glad I left that job because it led me to where I am today and it is like I really, really believe, I always say everything happens for a reason and you never feel it at the time. But I'm like, because of all that that's happened to me and at them times I thought I was rock bottom and nothing was going to come from it and now I look to where I am now. When something bad happens, I'm like, no, it's, it's going to be okay. I know it's going to be okay. Like I just stay in that positive mindset and that's true, all that stuff in that crisis pregnancy and the support I got and it's, made me grow as a person so so much and develop as a human and I'm grateful for it all I am I really am blessed and you touched there a bit Shauna just to get back a bit to MMA um, about the sacrifices that I think sometimes we see like your fans they see the highlight reel and the success and the glamour of it all uh, and that's really the perception we have but actually there are a lot of sacrifices 
for you to get where you are. As you say, you're incredibly disciplined and that's really, you know, in a big part why you're here today at the level you're at. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I never do things by half. I always give 110%. So um, I probably sometimes make it more difficult than it needs to be in myself, but that's what makes me shine. Then, like, I never, even when I go out to fight, I know my whole camp, I've given everything that I need. So that gives me the confidence then in the cage. And I've always been that way, so I'm not going to change now because that's just my mentality. Um, but you do, you sacrifice so much and you miss out on so much. But I know me working my ass off for the next six to seven years is going to change Jace's life. It's going to change his children's life. It's going to change his children's children's life because I'm going to go for it and I'm going to give him my all and I want to make it for him and for his kids and for the other generations that are going to come after that because I know my best can be the best in the world and I can get to the top. I have that potential. What advice would you give for other young athletes who are maybe watching this interview and would love to replicate your success? I think you need to just never give up. Put plans in place, work, don't slack, because the work needs to be put in. Um, show up to your training sessions, stick to your diets if you need to keep weight for certain competitions and just go for it. And enjoy the journey, because I definitely can say from periods of time in my kickboxing, there were stages where I didn't enjoy it. I went like I just got obsessed you have to have a happy medium as well you can't show up to your training sessions do what you need to do that's it but have your balance as well don't forget about life because you'll burn out you need to have a happy medium and enjoy the journey um, and just go for it keep going for those who are maybe not involved with martial arts you've spoken before about the benefits like for adults for confidence even for self-defense and also for kids yeah, yeah, like I think it's um, even jiu-jitsu. Out of all of them, I'm going to say jiu-jitsu because whatever about if someone's punching you and you punch them back, you're still being punched. But jiu-jitsu is a way of proper self-defense, in my opinion. And I think everyone should do it. Whether it's a community that there's, you could walk into a jiu-jitsu class, there could be a doctor, there could be a school teacher, there could be someone that works in a cafe, there could be a lollipop lady. They're, like, it's for everybody. It's not for one specific person. It's literally for everybody. And it's the most, it's like a puzzle. It's like a jigsaw. Like, it's like, I remember when I first joined, I was like, what is this? And then after about like four to six months and it's starting to click with you and you understand it's the most addictive thing in the world. Like jujitsu is one of them things that I think I'll do forever. Do you know, like I'll retire from MMA at whatever age, but jujitsu is a lifer and it's for everyone. There's people in the class that are 55, 60, and then there's people in the class that are 16. You know, it's literally, it's for everyone. And Jace only recently started it as well. So I'm excited to see how he gets on yeah, in Yeah, I was going to ask how he's, he's starting. I know he's not three till November, yeah. which was when you started, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I started kickboxing at three, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, he he done a few classes and he actually got on pretty well. And yeah. he's like, when are we going back to jiu-jitsu? Uh -huh. I love jiu-jitsu. And I'm like... <laughs> and we saw him in here and he's really athletic. Like you can tell. Yeah, he's so, sporty. He's a proper boy. He's, yeah. um, he's no fair for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's jumping off everything and climbing everything. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, so just to finish off, Shauna, obviously your first fight, UFC fight, is on the 22nd of July in London. So, I mean, how are you feeling and what are your plans for the future? And is it fair to say, you know, the best is yet to come? Oh, for sure. I'm only getting started. It's like, I've been doing MMA five years and I don't think I'm even near my full potential. Um, the UFC is the next chapter, which I'm so, so grateful for. Um, I'm glad my first fight is kind of near home because um, it means people can come and see my debut. Um, it's going to be an unreal night. My, my friend Molly McCann, she's on the card as well. So I'll be over training with her a good bit as well in camp. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a really special night. My green cat on in the Venom UFC gear and um, Hopefully I knock her out and get an extra 50 grand. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shauna, for joining us. Really enjoyed speaking to you and thank you for giving us your time. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you.